back at the State Farm Stadium for that ultimate RV show. Yes, it's still going on. It's a 10 day show. And we came back because some of you requested that we come back and show all the sprinters that are on. <laughs> Say hi to Bob. But you guys requested that we come back and kind of like give you like a total tour of all the sprinters. Is that how you would say it? Yeah. On the sprinter layouts, sprinter vans. Sprinter chassis. Sprinter chassis. So we're going to go check out all the sprinters. We didn't even check out any of them last time we were here. So we're kind of going into this blind. We don't know how many. There could be one good one. There could be 10 good ones. So it is really windy today. So we decided to shoot the intro here in the van where yeah. it's quiet and you can hear us, but yeah. just be forewarned that it may be a little windy out there. Yeah. We just got back from Prescott. So if you watched last week's video, cause we're already assuming it's live and we're assuming everything went good and the footage was good. Um, yeah, we kind of are wearing very similar things because that's all we got. So, but let's head into the RV show. All right, the first van that we have today is the Road Trek Agile SS. really like this layout it's a little different so it has the power bed which we are on the 144 chassis so having a bed that's actually large enough for me to lay in because I, I did try it um it's pretty impressive actually people are asking us to lay in it bob oh can you, you lay in it without putting your your shoes on it oh, see i can okay. actually lay in this okay so you do have a floor table mount here and this obviously will be made into a full-size bed so quite large does have a TV back here, some overhead storage, and some bug screens in the back. You've got some like storage here. I guess you could hang clothes there. One thing that's really nice about this layout is the bathroom is on the passenger side. It blocks part of the sliding door. So it does really use the space well because you have so little in here. Up above, you have your air conditioner with your vent fan in front of that. And then here on the driver's side, you have your galley where you've got your induction stove top, your refrigerator. I'm not sure what kind of microwave that is, if it's a convection or not. And then you also have your sink in front of that. And you have this quite large counter space considering this is such a small van. This is also a window van and it has the pop out uh, windows. So you can you know crank those out and then they open. And it also has these really cool bug screens and blackout shades. Pretty impressed with Road Trek on this layout. It is quite nice. Yeah, they've upholstered this. And then of course, you know, it's a window van, but they've insulated it and put this on top of it to kind of give it more of a window feel. So here is the bathroom, which, you know, reasonably sized. You know, you can, the, with the sprinters, it's, they're- A little taller. A little, little taller than the ProMaster. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a tight fit. And you can see this track here for your shower curtain. So you do get a little extra room in the shower. All right, you have eight overhead storage cabinets. And then you do have this cool table extension. I have never seen something like that. Now, you'd probably have to swivel the chair yes. around for it to actually work. But... Yes, you swivel these chairs around and then you have a nice little workspace up here. I believe this is like a little pantry. You've got some additional big storage down here for like pots and pans. And what's in here? Oh, just a nice little silverware drawer that's not very deep. So that's cool. All right, if you have seen any of our other videos, you guys know that we test drove a Mercedes. And I have to say, love the power of the engine. The layout is super nice and clean. It's got lots of cool features. I'm really a huge fan of the Mercedes. Oh, you can turn this way. Oh, nice. The problem is, I wouldn't call it a problem, but these have the electronic seats. They move back very slowly. Yeah, so you have to come over here and go, beep. 
may just take a minute. But all in all, quite impressed with Road Trek on this model. Okay, so you liked it. The only thing I don't think I liked was the price. I mean, it's probably a pretty decent price. You're getting a Mercedes and it is really nice, but $146,000, that just seems like a lot of money, but this is what you're getting. It used to be 202,000 apparently. You're getting a discount of 55,000 and it says it's a new 2023 Road Trek SS Agile SS AM four wheel drive. On to the next one. So now we are in the Integra Launch 19Y. It's on the Mercedes 144 chassis and it's a four wheel drive. The first thing I wanna do is get in the bed because you guys asked in our last video for us to get in these beds and see if we fit. And so, you know, your wish is our command. Bob and I both, just for reference, especially if you're new here, we're a little over six feet tall. So there are flares to help you out and I mean, Definitely doable. Actually, pleasantly surprised. Bob and I could sleep in this bed comfortably. We'd be a little close than we're used to, but it's doable. Okay, I'm gonna go through this layout pretty quick because there are a lot of models for a lot of the manufacturers that make something very similar to this. So I'll be quick. It has the flares on each side. It has the happy jack bed, so this goes up so that you can stow your bed and use this as a storage area. You have your bathroom here on this side. This Which, one has, I don't think you need to get in it, do you? No, this one has the cassette toilet in it. Some of them have a different toilet setup, but that's what this has. And those shelving units go... They go in here, right here, so you can see the different layers so that you can use so, that for storage. Yeah. Then on the passenger side, you have some additional storage here, but you have your sink. One thing I did notice is this one does have this little lip on the countertop. Don't know how I feel about that because any water you get on here is then going to be forced down inside the cabinet if this caulking fails. Right here behind the driver and passenger seat, you have a third row seat with some of your utilities underneath that seat. In a small van like this, not a huge fan of this seat here because it just takes up so much space that you don't necessarily get to utilize all the time. And the Console is essentially the same. This is on the Mercedes 144 chassis, four wheel drive, standard cockpit that you got here. What is slightly different with this model is this is open. So you have some bug netting here and you have your refrigerator here. Decent size fridge. Decent size fridge. Where's, but... where's all your controls? So your control system, oh, it's right here and everything appears to be off. Okay, so that's where your control system would be. So honestly, there are lots of models with this layout and I'm not a huge fan of this particular layout, but I'm just surprised at how many people replicate this. So we'll show you. For $139,000, mm. it's an okay, I like the van. I don't know if I like the layout. I think it depends on what you're wanting it for. I sure. think a single person who's into sports and different things, that's a perfect layout. Yes. If you're wanting to get out, you know, mountain biking, that type of stuff, it is a good fan for that. All right, let's check out this Tiffin next.
All right, we are in the Tiffin GH1. This is on the Mercedes 144 chassis. And just like the Integra, it's a very similar layout. It has the Happy Jack bed. It has on the passenger side, some storage, your sink, an induction stove top. Uh, well, it's not there, but- It's not here. I kind of like this counter better. I'll get to that in a second. You do have your bathroom here. The bathroom is bigger, but similar. You still have your shelving options that you can put in here. Uh, the door, I do think, is a little bit better because it does kind of give you some more space. Oh, look, it's like a privacy door. Yes. So it's a little different. Same cassette toilet, though. So then up here in the, I'll call it the middle of the van, you have your third row seating with your command center behind it. Couple things that I noticed in this van that are different than the Integra. You do have these nice acrylic windows that are double pane, so they provide some insulation. So that is a nice little upgrade. It does have kind of individual components for all of your, your systems. So it doesn't have like a centralized, um, I guess, controller, but it does have some very nice materials that they use throughout the van and Again, same similar fridge. So this one is also $139,000. So if it was me looking for a 144 chassis van, I might consider the Tiffin over the Integra. And then it has two chairs. Yeah. Two chairs. It's so similar Yeah. that it's, uh, you'd almost think they're owned by the same company. Oh, wait, they are. Nuh-uh. They are. Thor does own both uh, Integra, they own Tiffin, they own Thor, they own Airstream. Airstream. There's a whole bunch of brands that they I own. I looked it up. I didn't see Tiffin, but I did see Integra. Yeah, they just recently bought Tiffin. And what do you know? They look oddly the same. And what you have up here is exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same of what Bob has been saying. Oh, it feels so comfortable though. I'm not going to lie. I am a fan of how spacious the front is. Like this to me is worth it. I like it. So. All right, let's go uh, sign uh, some papers. Yeah, no, no, but that's all there is to say about the front of this. All right, let's head to the next one. Okay, we are in the Winnebago 2024 Revel. And from my research that I've done on the internet, the Revel is sort of like the OG of the 144 Sprinter layout. So as far as I know, but I'm curious, am I correct? If not, I know you guys will correct me. <laughs> so you can see this one has the bed up. So this is your kind of garage space that you can store, you know, bikes or, Snowboards. Snowboards, or... yeah. Whatever you need back here so that you can get out and enjoy the outdoors. So let's move forward. Look at the cool storage up top. Oh, oh, cool. Isn't that cool? Very nice. Yep, and then, yeah, just. Yeah, it does look nice. All right, without hitting my head. So on the passenger side, you do have your standard storage, your sink. There's no propane system in this van. It uses just batteries. So you have your induction stove top and you've got some storage up above and very similar to the Tiffin. You've got your bathroom. You can see the shelves are in place here and you can see here on the driver's side, we have the third seat again. Do you like this seat better or no? I don't know. I think this seat actually is probably a little more comfortable because it has a little bit more bench. The other one seemed quite small. Uh, but they did slide. Then above that, you have your control system with your main disconnect and all of your controls that are listed here or shown here. Uh, it has the same acrylic windows that the Tiffin has. And all in all, there's really not a whole lot different in these. They're all basically the same layout. Okay, I found a little spec sheet here. So it looks like you have a 24 gallon fuel tank, 
a 21 gallon freshwater tank, five gallon black tank, a 21 gallon gray tank, there you are. I can give you some dimensions, but these are going to be standard dimensions for all of the 144s. So it's uh, 19 feet, 7 inches long. It is 6 feet, 5 inches wide and has a max height of 10 foot. That must be a, an exterior height. Yes, because it does come standard with a roof rack and your AC unit and everything that's up there. Yeah. So this has an MSRP of $217,000. And the sale price on the sticker is $139,000. So don't you think they just mark them up to show you a sale? It does feel that way. But all in all, uh, considering all of the different manufacturers and the different setups. Oh, I forgot. We do have one more that is almost exactly the same layout. So before I tell you which one I would get, we'll go take a look at the last one. All right, so the next one is a Thor Tranquility 19L. It is a 2023, and the L, I think, means lithium, doesn't it? Nope, that's just the layout. I mean, this means lithium. That's true. <laughs> All right, well, it's 114,000. Let's check it out. Now, it's about $20,000 cheaper than the, the Integra, the Tiffin, and the Revel. And one of the reasons is this bed is fixed. So you have the same flares, same setup, but the bed does not go up and down. You also have this odd kitchen. I mean, the fit. It's, I mean, oh my I'm word. no small guy, but it's like shoulder, it's not even shoulder width right here. So this is, this is, this is tight. This is for a very small person. And you've got your fridge, which I can barely open. You have this microwave. Thor, stop putting this microwave in these vans. I'm just telling you, no one uses this. It's we want too a small. convection oven. We want a convection oven. This thing is too small and underpowered. Uh, and you do have a sink. Now I will say, without the induction cooktop here, you do have a decent like, prep area. So that's not too bad. And this countertop is pretty nice. I actually will say. Because you like to look underneath them. Yes, this is a solid material. Don't have to worry about any moisture or anything. It's nice and rolled over the top. I'm not going to like hit myself on a sharp corner. So they, they did a good job here. Okay. And then of course you have your bathroom, which, oh, are you kidding me? That's not a door. That's not a door. So this, you have is, to get in. this is how you get in. This little tiny door. No way. But, but it's not a bad size. What? That is a terrible size. I mean, but, but here's the thing you being tall, we have room this way. There are definitely worse bathrooms out there. It's not the greatest, but it would work. I guess ours is probably worse. I would have to say ours is worse. This is something that is different. So I do like that. They have the seat facing the sliding door. So, you know, you can sit here, you can work, you can do what you need to do. I kind of like that better. You can see out the window. So if you're at the beach or something, you know, you got a nice good view. You've got some storage above you with a TV. The TV is ridiculous. This is not useful. How in the heck are you, how? How do you use that TV? You probably could do something like maybe that and you can sort of kind of half watch it from bed. One thing that Thor did skimp on is they didn't put the shelf up here. So there's lots of aftermarket options for that. So you can easily add one, but it doesn't come with it. It does make it easier to get into the seat without having that up here, but it would be nice to have some storage. And that's about all I have to say about that. Is this the longest you can go? Absolutely not. That's in the next row. The flooring's um, cool. I like the it's flooring. It's just vinyl, but... It's just vinyl. Actually, let's check out the garage in this one, because it is a little bit different setup because the bed doesn't move. Okay. So here you can actually see your fixed bed. You still have plenty of storage underneath here. I don't know what else to say. 
feels like a lot of wasted space, but. I don't know though, because we we have chairs and we have a fire pit and we have a stove. Grill, not a stove. Oh, a grill. We have a grill, fire pit, chairs. Yes, that would all be great back here. I don't know about this bed though. You would have to add a mattress to it. Yeah, if you put like a good, like, you know, foam mattress on here, you'd probably get a good night's sleep. Now, one thing that I have seen is with no holes in this, like, I don't know if you call it a deck or material, you don't get any airflow underneath your mattress. So if you're in a really humid environment, you can get mold growing underneath your mattress. You need some airflow. So that might be something to consider if you own one of these. Hmm. Good to know. And All right. now you know. And now the more you know. On to the next one. We are in the Winnebago Adventure Wagon on the 144 chassis or 2500, whatever you want to call it. This is a minimalist van, if you ask me, and I'll let Bob tell you all about it. But first, let me try laying in the bed. Let's see the size. I have to say, plenty of room. This is very comfortable. I don't know if I could sleep on it, but wow, this is good quality. But this is a very big bed. And the nice thing is if you hit your head, it's not gonna hurt that bad. Okay, this adventure wagon is very minimalist. We'll actually start kind of opposite here, work our way up in the front. You basically have this counter and above it, you've got some storage. So what's really interesting is if you look on the floor, it's got all this L track. So all of the components can move and shift on the L track, but you have this, this is basically your sink. And I believe in here, you just have a little water system. So that's your water. And some more storage. So underneath the bed is where you have your battery pack on the back side there. So it's basically just like a standalone battery system. That is the electrical system for the van. You have this chest refrigerator here. I think it's also a freezer but that is in here. And this does have a huge bed. I'm thinking this is at least a queen size bed, if not bigger. Yeah. It is a very large bed. And again, there's L track kind of on the ceiling, on the walls, and just a very minimalist design. I don't see an air conditioner. It does not have an air conditioner, just this one exhaust fan. That is a deal breaker for me. <laughs> but this is, this is a really intended for like, Hey, I'm trying to get out to go mountain biking or, or whatever. An so, adventure. Yes, an actual adventure. Okay. So fair, 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 fair. What's under that seat? Is that a toilet? This, I'm going to guess. <gasps> yep, that is, is your cassette to toilet. Okay. So I'm assuming you pull it out to use it. Okay. Now, no shower. No, nope, no shower. Lots of storage underneath, though. You do have this very robust shelf. I mean, this thing is, is steel and it goes all the way to the front. So this is a super heavy duty shelf. Pretty impressed with that. But it is on your standard uh, Mercedes, you know, chassis with the nice console. But as you can see, this design, I mean, there's nothing special. There's nothing on the top. They do have a spare tire here. Which is nice. And there's no flares, no nothing. So it's just really minimalist. And how much was the price? It's a good question. 109. 109. Welcome to my favorite van. We are in the Storyteller Beast Mode, 
And as you guys know, if you've watched any of our videos, I absolutely love it. And we have reviewed this van a couple of times, so I won't go into- A couple? Okay, a few- Like a thousand. Not a thousand, but- okay, A lot. Several times. So just to start here in the back, you've got flares with your bed. It is fixed, it does fold up so that you can still have access through here for bikes and things like that. There are some really cool upgrades you can put underneath this as well. Here in front of me, this is your shower slash cassette toilet storage area. Up here is where the shower pops out. There's your shower, so you can climb inside. That is way easier than I thought. See, that's what we need, Hillary. Just when you're done showering, you're done. Put it away. No. So this third row seat actually has a couple of different positions. So you can, you know, make it into a bed. You can fold it up. I won't go into all the different configurations, but it's really cool with all the different configurations that it has. Over here on the passenger side, you have your galley. So you have your microwave. It is not a convection oven, just your microwave. It has a portable cooktop, some storage on this side, your sink. You do have your refrigerator and some controls here. And you do have your exhaust fan with and some cool bug screens. Oh yes, I forgot. This model does have an air conditioner. And you have this really cool custom control system that Storyteller does. It's pretty phenomenal. You got to look it up on their website and read all about it. Yeah, it wouldn't turn on for you. No, I think the batteries are too low. Oh, too low, so. So one of the things that is really cool is Storyteller puts this little badge on there. So it tells you that this is number 206 in 2023. No way. So that's kind of cool. Makes it feel special. And it's got all these, I love these kind of old school auxiliary switches. Pretty sweet. And you do have onboard air. You've got a couple of other cool features. You can see some of the buttons on the dash that are extra, but- I it, like, what are these on the back of the seat? So these are just some like storage pouches. Do all storytellers come with that? Ah, that's a good question. I don't know. Oh, okay. Do you like but the windows? I do like the windows. These are the pop out windows. So they pop out and then uh, like that way, if it's still raining or something, you can leave your windows open and get some good airflow. So the regular list price is $314,000 that to me is just crazy expensive. I mean, yes, it is $92,000 off, but still $220,000, it's awfully steep. That's way too much money. And this is a vehicle, it's going to depreciate. That is true. Very quickly at that. All right, we are in the Pleasure Way Ascent TS. This is on the Mercedes 144 chassis, and it does have a unique layout. So this one has the power bed here and back. Obviously, this will convert into a full-size bed with all of the, you know, pieces and parts. It is set up with the table right now. I've never seen a round table. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, this is this is different. So I, I do enjoy that. It does have some nice overhead storage all the way around, including the back of the van. So, and it does have it on the passenger side or the driver's side as well. Just wanted to make sure it didn't break anything. Oh, there's your wine guard. So, you got that. Back here, you do have your TV Over and here. your oh, just... control system. The location of this TV is actually pretty nice because you could lay in your bed and watch it. So, not a bad placement for that. The other thing I noticed is these, this is the window van. So, that you is have a huge window. Very large windows you know, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then they do 
pop out on this side so you have some good ventilation as well with your air conditioner up top here. And then moving up front on the passenger side, you've got your galley, so you have your induction stove top and a very, very large sink. Wow. And some very high quality, heavy duty uh, countertop material. So that is quite nice. All right, starting on the driver's side, we have our microwave up top with your refrigerator. Does look like it has a freezer compartment, kind of small, but not bad. And then I'm assuming down here, this is where some of your like water heater, water pump, all that good stuff is at. So this is actually not too bad of a size. You've got some decent width. You know, it is the Mercedes chassis. So headroom, it's okay. Better can, than the Ram Pro Master. Better than the Ram, that is for sure. Not a huge fan of the sink placement. When you're trying to take a shower, you have to kind of stand between the toilet and the sink. I think that's all for here up above. We do have an exhaust fan here. Okay, well, uh, let's see. Up here in the front of the van, it's just the standard Mercedes um, console. Nothing exciting, different, or special. They did not put in the storage shelf above, so you do lose that storage, but it does make it easier to get in, so just a personal preference, I guess. So at 134,000, I'm actually a fan of this layout. I like the power bed, the space in the back. Whoa, and... whoa, 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 whoa. You're a fan of a power bed? When did this change? Well, after reading all the comments from the viewers, you guys kept telling me, stop worrying about it, that you had nothing but success with it. So I'm trusting you guys and, you know, I'm changing my opinion. I'm gonna be a power bed fan. Alrighty, you heard so. it here first, guys. And one thing we should say is every single van we've shown has come with an awning. Yes, yeah. We haven't really done a good job of telling about all of the things that are on the tops of the van. So most of them, well, I shouldn't say most, all of them have solar, they have awnings, some of them have roof racks, um, some of them have extra lights, but yeah, this one does come with an awning. Okay. All right, this is the Pleasure Way Plateau FL and very similar to the previous van. Come on in and take a look. Well, okay, so this van is on the Mercedes 170 chassis and it is significantly bigger and I'm a huge fan. So you have the same power bed back here yep. with your TV, your storage, the same windows, everything is exactly the same. You have this additional storage cabinet here, which it's kind of hard to see, but there's some storage there. You have a nice air conditioner uh, overhead. On the passenger side, you have your induction stove top with some additional counter space. You have your huge sink that I just think is phenomenal. And some additional storage on the front of that. So you can you know, be prepping food, looking out at the ocean, watching the waves come in. I mean, I'm not dreaming or anything. And then on the driver's side, you have your microwave up top, the same refrigerator with your small freezer compartment, and then the bathroom. And I believe this is the same setup as the prior one. So I don't remember seeing a medicine cabinet in the other one, but I don't you either. definitely have one in here. Cool. I like it. So that's quite nice. I'm assuming this one's going to be a lot more expensive. It is slightly more expensive, but we'll get to that in a minute. Moving up to the front, you do have your max air fan here with a TV desk and some storage. So, you know, you could have this as like a, like a work console or, you know, a place to eat dinner, something like that. So it's kind of cool because you can leave your bed set up in the back and still have a place to enjoy, you know, a meal together. So the front is exactly the same, you know, just the standard Mercedes chassis with the swivel chairs. I think the only other thing I have to say is this one is $181,000. Uh, 
but kind of steep to me but it's kind of steep same 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 yeah but it is on the mercedes chassis and you get all of this amazing room yeah anything on the outside nothing 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 i haven't said anything about the outside of most of these but i will say pleasure way does do a nice job of kind of hiding some of the things that are on the outside yeah i, I have seen on some of the thors where you know there's like all these water connections and it just looks kind of messy but they, they did a good job trying to hide everything. I actually think most of the vans did a good job today. But yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, so now we are at a 2024 Midwest Automotive Design Passage. It's $169,000, so let's see what you get for that. Ooh, all right. Well, back here, you have your nice power bed. You have this really cool table. It's a different kind of material than I'm used to seeing, so that's pretty nice. You do have your TV back here as well with your overhead storage, so this bed is definitely big enough for us to lay down in. Yeah, because you'd put it all together, make one big old, I bet queen size, honestly. That does look like a queen size bed, yes. You do have the nice big windows on both sides of the van and they have uh, like sliders. So they open up so you get some nice good airflow through here. And up above, you have your air conditioner. Isn't that a cool looking air conditioner? It definitely is a like custom, I don't know, cover or whatever on there. It looks pretty sharp. You've got some storage here. On the passenger side of the van, you have your overhead. This looks like a convection microwave. Down below, you have your induction cooktop. And I was like <laughs> trying to figure out how to open it. Decent sized sink. It's a little narrow, but you know, you're in a 144 chassis. So what do you expect? And you've got your refrigerator down here below, which I think is the same model we have. Perfect. In our Tularo. One thing I find really nice in this van is they did something special with this door rather than just being kind of that standard kind of cheap wood door. They went ahead and added this like glass. My thought is what if that breaks? I don't think it would. I bet you this is tempered glass and it's pretty hard. So you'd have to hit it really hard. But look at this bathroom. Now, the shower curtain's kind of weird, but you've got a full size toilet and a place to take a shower. I don't know about this, but I guess it's gonna help keep any water from spilling out, so that's fine. Okay, so if you're gonna have a sink, I would say this one's ideal because it's so far away. Like at least it's not over your lap, so I like that. You got your shower right here, and you clip it up here. The only problem is, is if I'm gonna stand up in here, which, this toilet probably swivels i would guess i don't think it does you don't think it does you really think this is, oh okay i know i have a hat on but like this bathroom is a definite no for me like the shower right here you'd have to sit down to shower you can't stand up this is a fixed sink yeah. this is a fixed toilet like i have no room at all now, one thing I do like, though, is the like shower basin or tub or whatever you want to call that. Yeah, it's like a uniform form plastic piece. So that's kind of cool looking. I like that it goes down and it's deeper. But again, like, OK, this would be ideal without a sink. Right. Because then you could agree. stand over here. So it's a very tight fit if you're six foot and above. Below that, you might be OK. Okay, so you do have your max air fan right here and it's got this really cool kind of custom grate over the top of it. So that's kind of cool looking. And you've got lots of overhead storage right above the driver and passenger seat. Can't really see in it, but it seems deep. It is, it is actually quite deep. I mean, let's see, it's that deep. <laughs> okay. So it's pretty deep. Oh, 
I remember these. Okay, Midwest Designs, you guys adding these awesome seats where they like, where they massage you and they heat. I mean, for a long drive, this is phenomenal. So hats off to you for going the extra mile. Yeah, I bet you they built that in the price. They certainly did. Okay. They certainly did. And they've upgraded the, the leather. So they've got some nice stitching on here. They're just really nice seats all in all. They've done some custom upgrades to the dash where they've added some, you know, just some trim pieces, just, you know, making it look a little nicer, but functionally it's exactly the same as all of the other Mercedes consoles. And uh, all in all, this is a pretty nice layout, good quality. I'm impressed. Is that all you have to say about this one? That's really all I have to say. So at 169,000, that's pretty pricey. All right. We are back at Mr. Lemon. And it's crazy windy. And it's crazy windy, so this might be terrible, terrible quality. But I think we're done. I don't know how many vans we just showed you, but it felt like a lot. All right, well, I am done for the day. We have shown you guys a lot of vans and I am absolutely exhausted. So we need to head out and grab some lunch, but uh, wanted to thank you guys for coming along, taking a look at all the sprinters. Let us know, was there something that you liked? Was there something that we missed? One thing to keep in mind, just in case you're like, wait, you didn't show me, you know, whatever. We only could show you what was at this show. And truthfully, sometimes these Arizona shows, they don't have a ton for us to show you. There was a lot today, but like, man, there's so many vans out there, so many different layouts out there that we'd love to show you, but stay tuned because in the new year, we are gonna go to some new shows that aren't in Arizona. So if you watch all the way to the end of this, then you have a little bit of a sneak peek of what's coming next year. But thank you so much for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time. Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs>